So maybe you've heard the saying, you can't win your fantasy football league during your draft. However, you can lose it, right? There's a ton of different ways to draft in fantasy football, and on any given year, they can all find success. We always preach heavy running back, but what happens when you go heavy wide receiver? What is going on, Headliner Nation, Jake Fantasy Headliners. Hopefully everybody's doing well out there today where it's Monday and it's time to pop lock and mock it here once again now. In one of our past mocks, I mean, you know I always love running backs early. I have forever, for like 20 years, almost gone heavy running back early. And it's, you know, brought a lot of success. But we had some comments last week during a mock draft video where somebody says, hey, I prefer to go heavy wide receiver and would love to see the thought process if you were to try it yourself. Now... Full disclosure, I'm not a huge fan of going heavy wide receiver early. I'm just not. And you may see why here in this mock draft is just because the volume that running backs can get, it, it, it dwindles quickly, right? There's not a whole lot of guys out there that you can count on for maybe even 15 touches a week. And if you wait, you're more than likely just hoping that one of them hits or that you can play the waiver wire and really win it that way throughout the season. But we're not going to waste any more time. We're going to get right into a mock draft lobby here. And we're going to be using, once again, the Fantasy Pros NFL Draft Wizard here. It's a great way for me to get through a mock draft somewhat quickly and not you know have to sit here and wait for the clock to tick, but also gives me time to sit here and talk you through what I'm thinking in my head. So got it all set up here for the 2021 season, half PPR snake style draft. Uh, 12 teams coming from the 10th position, not something we've done so far here this offseason. One quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, a tight end, two flex spots, uh, a defensive kicker, and seven bench. So let's see. Let's see what we can come up with from the 10th spot. Going heavy pass catcher, right? And this is how I want to start this show off, by saying this. You can still go heavy pass catcher by taking a running back somewhat early, right? Do you have to go three straight wide receivers in order for it to count? I mean, who's really paying attention? Where is there a rule book that says how many you have to take in order to follow a certain strategy? There's not, right? You have to take what the draft gives you. Now, obviously, you want to slightly trend towards the pass catchers over running backs, but if somebody falls to you, you don't just pass them because they're sitting here and you're trying to follow a strategy. If you go into a draft and you have it penciled down, I'm going wide receiver, wide receiver, tight end, wide receiver, running back, you are, you're losing, already. You've already lost. Because if you lock yourselves into certain positions in certain rounds, you're not paying attention to the value that's being left there that could really give you the better team overall, right? So you can have that plan. Say, hey, I'm going into this. I'm wanting some wide receivers early. I'm wanting some of the big names. Cool. That is awesome. You should you could do that. But take what the draft gives you. I'll, I'll, maybe we'll see this play out here in the second or third round. We'll have to wait and see. So we're going into our draft here. I'm going to pull up some cheat sheets here and hide the drafted players. These are not my tiers, so I might as well hide the tiers because they're not mine. So this is what we got. Wide receivers, all of them for the most part, right? We got Hill, Adams, Diggs, Hopkins, Ridley. They're all sitting there. Most of the big names already off the board. In fact, the only ones that have been taken here so far, if we look at the draft board, was A.J. Brown at 1.09. Oh, dear Lord. That is early for A.J. Brown, but you can see the run on running backs early, and you can expect that a lot. In most drafts, that's going to happen. So we have Tyreek Hill, right? Big play threat, big play touchdowns, not so much the volume type of guy that you maybe you get with a Devontae Adams or Stephon Diggs or DeAndre Hopkins, right? He may not be that big volume, but he's got that big play. So maybe you play in a league where you get bonus points for touchdowns over 30, 40, 50 yards, whatever it may be. Tyreek Hill may have a little bit more appeal in those leagues. We know it's a high-powered offense. Devontae Adams, what happens with Aaron Rodgers, right? Uh, now, it looks like Aaron Rodgers is still a Packer. It should be a Packer, but who really knows at this point, right? They're not happy with each other. So what's going to happen going forward? Maybe you don't want to take that risk, depending on when you draft. Then you pass on Devontae Adams, you go to Stephon Diggs. High-powered offense, huge target share, touchdown upside, big playability. I don't hate... Stephon Diggs. I don't hate DeAndre Hopkins either. We know the volume is going to be there. The only difference for me between Hopkins and Diggs is Hopkins has more people on a weekly basis to share targets with. They got the, the new toy in Rondell Moore, right? They brought in A.J. Green. 
Uh, they have still have Christian Kirk as of right now. There's options out of the backfield, right, with Chase Edmonds. There's there's solid opportunities in this passing game for other people not named DeAndre Hopkins. And if we learned anything from the Cardinals last year, it's that they force-fed DeAndre Hopkins to the point that it kind of handcuffed their overall offense because the defense knew where they were going. They're going to have to spread it around a little bit more this year to find more success. For me, I'm going to switch it up a little bit. Uh, I understand the, the reason to take Tyreek Hill, Devontae Adams here. I, I totally get it, but we're mock drafting, right? So we want to see how teams look in different scenarios. I haven't done very many mock drafts where I ever end up with Stephon Diggs, like ever, because I'm always taking running backs. Or you, if you take the big name guys, I think Stephon Diggs belongs in those big name guys. And I just want to see how the team looks if we go Bill's Mafia round one, Stephon Diggs. Let's just see what the, the team looks like here. Uh, if we started off that way, bring my roster over here. Now, perfect example, and, and we're gonna we're gonna test this out here, right here live on the show, because I don't know how it's gonna turn out. But we still have Devonte Adams on the board, which is a crazy, but could happen because people are worried about Aaron Rodgers. And we still have DeAndre Hopkins, which to me says, hey, there's a little bit of hesitancy here in this draft, but we're about to have a big run on wide receivers. We've already had somewhat of a run on running backs, but look who's still available. we got Austin Eckler, Cam Akers, Joe Mixon, Antonio Gibson. Do I really want to go through this entire draft and just block it out and act like they're not sitting there, right? Because if I wait and I just say, hey, I have wide receiver penciled down for the second round, I have to take a wide receiver here. Mm, doesn't make a whole lot of sense, right? I really want a running back, right? And if I don't take one here... I'm probably going to be left with like Miles Sanders as my number one. And that doesn't give me my warm fuzzy on the inside. However, Devontae Adams and DeAndre Hopkins as your wide receiver too is borderline ridiculous, right? I mean, that's huge value. And that's where you have to weigh things back and forth. Do I want to just the safety aspect of my brain saying go, go running back because you're not going to have one? Or is it, I got to do what's smart to build the better team at this point? At this very point, Devontae Adams or DeAndre Hopkins as my number two wide receiver in a half PPR format just makes too much sense, right? So as of right this second, Aaron Rodgers is a Green Bay Packer. As of right this second, Devontae Adams is a Green Bay Packer. At the time of your draft, you need to weigh those possibilities, whether they, are they going to be there or are they not? Right now, Going into the, the, the second round, got a big long wait here. I'm, I'm going all in, right? You got to go all in. My, my, my gut says just, dude, take the running back. Take Austin Eckler and move on because he's got some PPR upside. The other side of me is like, dude, Devontae Adams in the second round is a no-brainer. And let's just go all in and let's just see what happens, right? Let's just see what happens. And it basically happened just as I expected, because who is the top running back available? Rewind it like 30 seconds. I'll tell you which name is probably going to be on the top. It was Miles Sanders. So now all of a sudden, do I have that warm fuzzy with Miles Sanders being my number one running back here in 2021? I love Miles Sanders. I don't love the decision making of the Philadelphia Eagles. And that's a problem. Uh, is there risk here? Less risk, right? Less risk because He's in the third round. He's not a first, second rounder. Uh, the, the, the talent is 100% there. Are they going to be committed to him? Look at the pass catchers still on the board, right? You got Terry McLaurin, Mike Evans, Julio Jones, Chris Godwin, Robert Woods, CeeDee Lamb, DJ Moore. I mean, wow. There are still, there's some firepower left here on the board. And when we go to our draft board, you can kind of see, we'll pull it up. We're starting to get a good mix, right? Some tight ends come off the board. The running backs have started to slow down because we went so heavy early and now people are starting to focus on pass catchers. So if I had to guess, we're going to have a pretty heavy run on pass catchers here pretty soon. However, look at the teams that are drafting here right now. You have me who went Diggs and Adams, back-to-back -back wide receiver. The team before me, wide receiver, wide receiver, wide receiver. The team after me, pretty, pretty solid, right? He's got a running back and a wide receiver. Which way does he go here in the third? He could go either way. Same thing with Tutu Train. Horrible name, by the way. Uh, he could go either way because he's got one of each. So had either one of these guys had two running backs or two wide receivers, I can kind of gauge potentially what they may do in the third to see who's left on the board. They don't give they don't help me out a whole lot here because they got 
they got one of each. So they could literally go either way. How many people are available at the running back position? Could I, what happens if the, if I go wide receiver here and the next two teams, they both go running back in both picks? Four guys come off the, the board in those picks, right? Miles Sanders, Chris Carson, David Montgomery, Josh Jacobs. What if they're all gone? Well, that leaves me Miles Gaskin as a potential running back one. Kareem Hunt as a potential running back. Travis Etienne, Mike Davis. You can see it gets a little bit iffy for me. So if I don't take a running back here, what about wide receiver? What happens if they go? What if they both go wide receiver in both picks and, and four guys come off the board there? McLaurin, Evans, Julio, and Godwin. Well, I still got Woods, Lamb, Moore, Thielen, Johnson. There's still a lot of names that I like there after that. There's not at the running back position. So this is where... You have to look at the situation back. Like, all right, this is my time to pick my running back. And then I can always go back to pass catchers with my next pick. I can see if a TJ Hawkinson's there or, or one of these top wide receivers that are still there that would be my number three, a flex spot. So for me, it's really between two guys, Miles Sanders and David Montgomery. Not huge on Chris Carson. I do understand that the Seahawks want to run the ball more. The problem is Chris Carson cannot stay healthy. David Montgomery was arguably the best running back down the stretch of the 2020 season. I really hope that Matt Nagy doesn't screw that up. Do I trust Matt Nagy to not screw that up? No, I don't. Uh, they brought in Damian Williams, right? Uh, Tariq Cohen, he's coming back from an injury here this year. But David Montgomery is the guy that needs the volume in this offense. And it's not even close, in my opinion. But do we trust Matt Nagy? And you're coming down to either trust in the Eagles or the Bears to make the right call as far as play calling, and neither one of them really give me that warm fuzzy. But as of right now, I hope that Matt Nagy saw the end of 2020. They saw what they could get out of David Montgomery, both on the ground and through the air, and he's going to be my choice here for my number one, and my fingers are crossed, right? Fingers are definitely crossed. So now we move on to the fourth round. Go back to pass catchers first, right? Because that's what we really want. We got, we got Josh Jacobs sitting here, which I don't hate as my number two. I think it's a He's fringe running back two this year, right? He's not that top 12 guy, in my opinion, with the addition of Kenyon Drake and the offensive line. Somebody tried to sell me this past week that Alex Leatherwood is going to be like the reason that they excel this year. Come on. Uh, look at the pass catchers, though. Julio Jones, Chris Godwin, Robert Woods, all three of them still available. And these are my number three. Julio Jones is my number three? Are you kidding me? I mean, I understand Julio is not what he used to be, but Julio used to be fringe round one. Julio, if he regresses down to 1,200 yards and a handful of touchdowns, he's still more than a wide receiver. Three, Chris Godwin, same thing, right? He's going to get the volume in that offense, but man, does he have a lot of people to split with, with Mike Evans and Gronk, and I'm not even counting out Scotty Miller and Tyler Johnson and O.J. Howard coming back. I mean, there's a lot of lot of great options. Antonio Brown also. Uh, Robert Woods, I love me some Bobby Trees this year because he is going to soak up targets from Matthew Stafford. It's going to be Stafford's binky. Shout out Dr. Ethan Turner. And for me, you have the the high risk, high reward in Julio Jones. You have the safe option in, in Robert Woods. Here's the deal. And this is where you kind of need to, to weigh your options, right? If you take the risk and you go with Julio Jones... You're doing it in hopes that you can make up for your downfall at the running back position, right? You're making up that, hey, man, I, I don't know what my running backs are going to look like after David Montgomery. I, I need to make up those extra points. I, I need to try to catch lightning in a bottle every week. I need those big blowout games from Julio Jones. Or you can look at it this way. I'm going to go the safer route. Give me the safe 10 points a week from Robert Woods with the occasional big game and keep it safe because I'm not too sure what my running back situation is going to do. In my opinion, I'm already taking risk here, right? Because I'm not going with running backs early. Uh, at this point, I'm going all in, right? And if I'm going all in on the pass catchers, why not go all in with one of the best to ever play? And I'm just going to say Julio Jones in the fourth round as my wide receiver three is going to be my choice. And I say that because of this. I'm not sitting here saying that Julio Jones is a must-have for me. I'm not sitting here saying that my team is reliant on Julio Jones. He is my number three, okay? And if Julio Jones is anything like he has been in the past, as my number three paired up with Devontae Adams and Stephon Diggs, we're looking at huge, huge points. So that's where we kind of have to, to, to gauge it, right? Do you want to take that risk? You want to go for the home run? You want to play it a little bit safe. In this scenario, I'm going for the home run. 
Uh, now we look back here. What do we got here? Fifth round. We got plenty of quarterbacks left. We're not looking quarterback lately because this this honey pot right here from like the 10 to 13-ish range, that's where I'm looking for my quarterback, which is going to be right around round 9 or 10 or so. Uh, we've got ourselves three pass catchers, now three stud pass catchers. What about running back? Kareem Hunt. What is Kareem Hunt good for? He's good for 10 points a week, right? He's going to have the occasional outburst. If Nick Chubb were to go down, he's going to have uh, more chances at that outburst. He'll run behind arguably the best offensive line in football. He can catch passes out of the backfield. He's used inside the red zone. The volume just isn't going to be huge. However, the, the volume that he does get is going to be very efficient. So in my opinion, Kareem Hunt here as my running back too gives me that safe floor every week, right? I know what to expect every single week from Kareem Hunt. I'm going in there saying, man, if you can get me 10 points, this team is going to win on a weekly basis. If you go down to Travis Etienne, what is this split going to be in this backfield with James Robinson and Carlos Hyde? Chase Edmonds, a lot of Chase Edmonds truthers out there, but I'm telling you, Chase Edmonds thrives in the role that he had. A similar role to what we see with Kareem Hunt. The difference between Hunt and Edmonds, honestly, is Hunt has a better defense overall in Cleveland and a better offensive line to run behind. What does that mean? Later in games, more leads, more likely to run in Cleveland. Arizona, their secondary a little bit weak, plus they have they play a lot of games against some high-powered offenses to where maybe their defenses, uh, their defensive secondary is just taking advantage of they're having to throw for four quarters. You say, well, that, that works out for Chase Edmonds. Not always, right? I mean, we're talking about a third down guy with an occasional run between the tackles. He's not going to be the goal line guy. Kareem Hunt has that ability to be a top 10 guy. We've seen it before. We've, we've seen him in a backup role in that role. So for me, I'm playing it safer here. I took the, the risk with Julio Jones. I took the risk. Now I'm going to play it a little bit safer and I'm going with Kareem Hunt as my running back too, trying to get the overall solid safety back after, after I've taken these risks early. Um, and it, it still continues to, to fall out perfectly. Now, a lot of people say, man, you missed out on the top five tight ends, Jake. I did. I did. Kyle Pitts, if, if Julio Jones wasn't in Atlanta, it makes a lot more sense. But because Julio's still there at the time of this recording, uh, it's not going to happen, right? I, I'm, I'm going to stick with Julio Jones as of right now. Dallas Goddard, go dare if you're feeling fancy. Uh, I don't dislike whatsoever. Uh, Noah Fant, uh, sharing with Cortland Sutton coming back. Jerry Judy, KJ Hamler, a lot of options who play in quarterback. Logan Thomas, I don't dislike whatsoever. Big Bob Tunyon, I'm not going double packer just in case something were to happen to Rodgers. Mike Gusecki got a lot more to share with, but then we start getting into some more upside down in here. So at this point of the draft, I'm basically going to punt tight end, take two guys later on, and hope that one of them hits. Uh, so we can basically just not look at tight end right this second. For quarterback, I'll start to look at it. We got Lamar, we got Dak, we got Russ, Aaron Rodgers. Okay, a lot of great options. Trust me, I, I'm not opposed to taking Lamar Jackson here in the sixth round. I'm really not. However, there's still a lot of upside. I mean, Justin Herbert, Tom Brady after him. I'd rather load up on another pass catcher, right? If we're looking for these pass catchers, let's see what we got. Well, Brandon Ayuk, pretty versatile, right? We can see him doing you know, a few different things on the field uh, for San Francisco. Jamar Chase, the breakout rookie. Well, I mean, what's holding me back from taking Jamar Chase here and then pairing him up with a Joe Burrow later on? That's a potential stack that we can look at, right? What about uh, DJ Chark? DJ Chark, I think, is on the verge of, of having a breakout season here this year, a bounce back season, if you want to call it that, because we've seen him produce before. I love the potential of DJ Chark, especially as my number four, Chase Claypool, a little bit more dependent on a Juju injury or a Deontay Johnson injury, but still has that touchdown upside, just may not see consistent volume. Will Fuller, sharing targets, not going to be there to start the season. Robbie Anderson, Debo Samuel, I mean, we're getting further down the list. For me, right now, it's between Jamar Chase and DJ Chark. At the running back position, we got our two, right? We're Trying to go heavy pass catcher here. We already have three three uh, wide receivers. Do I want to go a running back here? Travis Etienne. Love the talent. Don't love the landing spot. Melvin Gordon is intriguing to me. He is not involved in the passing game. He now has Javante Williams to worry about. However, last year he had Royce Freeman and Philip Lindsay to worry about, and he still finished inside the top 20. I'm looking for safety, right? Because I didn't get it early at the running back position. So for me, it's between Melvin Gordon, Jamar Chase, and DJ Chark. 
We still went heavy pass catcher. We crossed it off our list. Had you gone into this draft saying, I'm going heavy pass catcher, and you walked out of your draft with Stephon Diggs, Devontae Adams, and Julio Jones, you've accomplished your mission. Who? What else are you trying to prove at this point? So for me, now I'm trying to build the better overall team, even though he's not involved in the passing game. Melvin Gordon is a potential top 20 option is where I'm going to go here, put him as a flex play, and hopefully he provides that 8 to 12 point floor on a weekly basis, the occasional touchdown. Maybe they don't you know, hammer Javante Williams early. They work him in slowly. Melvin Gordon still gets that opportunity. I'll go that way to give myself a safer option. And it's because we still have a lot of great options on the board, too. I mean, look at look at the wide receivers that are left. Tyler Boyd. I'm not opposed to Tyler Boyd being my number four. Curtis Samuel, Jerry Judy. You got the, the reigning Heisman winner in Philadelphia, Devontae Smith, even though I'm not a huge uh, pro-Smith guy here in year one. Devontae Parker shared a lot. Corey Davis. I mean, oh, I don't know. Uh, Marquise Hollywood Brown, LaVisca Chenault. I mean, there's still some, some decent options here. At the running back position, Damian Harris. There's 54 running backs in New England. Which one's going to touch the ball? I, it should be Damian Harris, but we're not making the decisions. David Johnson, same thing. He's got Mark Ingram and Philip Lindsay and everybody else and their mother on the death chart here. Leonard Fournette, same thing, right? Leonard Fournette needs to be the guy in Tampa Bay, but Ronald Jones, Gio Bernard, Keyshawn Vaughn, they're all in the mix. James Conner. Hmm. Now, a lot of people say, James Conner sucks. Why are you even looking at James Conner? Safety. We're looking for the safety because we didn't get stud running backs early. Now, James Conner is going to slide into the Kenyon Drake role. Maybe you don't believe it, whatever you want to believe. He's still going to go out there and, when healthy, going to touch the ball between 15 and 20 times a game. Late in games, if they have a lead, who's running the ball? Going to be James Conner. He can be involved in the passing game. Not going to be the strong suit in this offense for him. Look at the wide receivers on the outside. you got DeAndre Hopkins and Rondell Moore and A.J. Green and Andy Isabella. The boxes aren't going to be stacked. Defenses have to worry about Kyler Murray rushing and scrambling out of the pocket. That's going to only open up running lanes for James Conner on a one-year deal, and they don't care. They can just run him into the ground. What do they have to lose? So James Conner becomes an option. Zach Moss, <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I'm not going Zach Moss. Uh, Kenyon Drake, he's still going to get whatever's left over from Josh Jacobs. Then you get down to Michael Carter, A.J. Dillon. Gus Edwards is intriguing for the later round pick, but not yet. So it's really between Tyler Boyd, Curtis Samuel, Jerry Judy, and James Conner. Now, I've accomplished my mission of going heavy pass catcher, and my inside brain says, hey, continue to go for the safety at running back position and just hope that it pans out. I'm not going to have to start this guy, but if it turns out to be a good thing, this is somebody with you know top 15, top 20 overall potential for the season that I can get in the seventh round. I'm, I'm going to take it. I'm going to go with James Conner. And we got some information. Kyle has some great information coming out about James Conner. You don't want to miss it. James Conner is an absolute potential boom this year. So make sure you're looking out for that. Uh, so here we go into the eighth round. This is where I start looking quarterback, right? Because I, I want a Tom Brady. Uh, we already lost a Justin Herbert. He's not on the board. Aaron Rodgers, total crapshoot at this point, right? I went Devontae Adams, stacking him with Adams right now. If we knew they were going to be, there would be a gold mine. But we just don't know. Jalen Hurts, don't hate Jalen Hurts. I think we're really reliant on his rushing ability because I think the passing ability is going to be hit and miss on a weekly basis. It's going to have some huge games. Also going to have some bad games. We're really going to need that 70, 80, 90 yards a week rushing to give him that safer floor. Tom Brady, I mean, <laughs> the dude doesn't age. Um, he has arguably the best weapons in all of football. Uh, a great schedule. Uh, now the offense has clicked. They picked it up second half. Could I wait one more round and go for Tom Brady? I could. He'd probably be there in the ninth. But what if he's not? Tom Brady is somebody who I believe is a borderline league winner this year because you're getting him close to the double-digit rounds, and it will not surprise me if he finishes as a top-five overall quarterback. I don't care about his age. You look at the situation he has with an improved offensive line. He's got an overall running game and tons of pass catching weapons with touchdown upside in an offense that wants him to throw the ball. I'm, I'm going with Tom Brady right here because you know what? Uh, age is only a number apparently and I want to win some football games. 
Now, a lot of people say, well, how often do you look at bye weeks? I don't look at bye weeks too much. Outside of my quarterback and my backup quarterback, if I take one, that's about it. So, And I don't always take a backup quarterback. It really depends who falls later in the drafts. Sometimes I'll just stream it for my bye week. But being that Tom Brady is like 100 years old, I may take a backup uh, just in case. Uh, but back to the, the draft here. We're looking at tight end. Noah Fant still sitting here in the ninth round. Do I think that Noah Fant has top 10 potential, 100% talent-wise. It's just the question marks in that offense, right? What about Logan Thomas? Now, he's got Ryan Fitzmagic at quarterback, which means they're going to throw the ball a lot more. Terry McLaurin, Curtis Samuel, you got J.D. McKissick and Antonio Gibson in the backfield. How much does Logan Thomas see? What if he sees similar numbers to last year and gets right around 600 yards and six touchdowns? I mean, that's borderline top 12 tight end numbers in, in fantasy football these days. Uh, Mike Gusecki, Irv Smith, you're, you're getting a lot more risky. So in my opinion, it's between Noah Fant and Logan Thomas for the tight end position. For wide receivers, I don't dislike uh, I don't dislike Marvin Jones Jr. here. I think he, he sees some volume coming from Trevor Lawrence. Michael Pittman, another guy. With Carson Wentz now, he's going to be a red zone threat. He's going to be a big playability. T.Y. Hilton and Paris Campbell can't stay healthy consistently, only leading to more targets going the way of Michael Pittman. I don't, I don't hate that whatsoever. Mike Williams in L.A., we know Herbert's going to throw the ball down the field. Mike Williams is good for a big play almost once a week, but is it a, a touchdown? And, and one catch for 60 yards just doesn't thrill me that much. What about the running back position? we got Zach Moss, Kenny and Drake, A.J. Dillon, Tony Pollard, Naheem Hines, Latavius Murray. Latavius Murray is intriguing, but not until a little bit later, just because he's somebody who's he's a handcuff, but he's going to have weekly value still because he's still going to get touches on a weekly basis. Um I'm going to go tight end, and I'm going to take a little bit of a risk. I'm going to go with the guy with the higher upside of the tight end position. There's some question marks in Denver, but I still think the ceiling, the potential ceiling is higher than that of Logan Thomas, so I'm going to go with Noah Fant. And here we go. What do we have left? Heading into the double-digit rounds now, round 10, not looking quarterback now. Now we're not looking tight end, so it's really just stacking up depth at running back and wide receiver. We should probably go with some more pass catchers, right? We got our big three, but after that, we got some question marks. And uh, we've already talked about a few of these guys. I don't mind the rookie, Jalen Waddle, but he does have a hard time, you know, searching for targets in that offense. A lot of other options there. And can Tua really support all of them? In my opinion, if you want to play it a little bit safer, you go Marvin Jones. You want to swing for the fences, the big plays, the home run upside, the touchdown ability in an offense where he could see the most targets? Give me Michael Pittman. I'll take Michael Pittman Jr. here as my wide receiver four. Still a ton of great options available at the wide receiver position. Maybe we want to go a little bit heavier wide receiver here a little bit later with some of these guys because we know the, the well has runneth dry at running back at this point, right? Tariq Cohen, he's not going to be a, a three-down guy if something were to happen to David Montgomery, so that's not intriguing to me. Uh, J.D. McKissick, PPR upside could be there, right? We saw this guy getting over 10 targets a week sometimes last year. What about Alexander Madison? Not unless something happens to Cook. Penny, Mac, Michelle, Bernard, Ahmed, uh, Hyde, Snell. None of these guys are overly intriguing. I'd rather just take my risk with some of these guys that we have at the pass catcher's position at wide receiver. Darnell Mooney. I like me. I, I'm, I may go full Mooney a few times here this year. Jamison Crowder. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets cut here pretty soon just so they can save that, like, what, 15 mil? Henry Ruggs, big play upside potentially there, but all they make him do is run go routes. Uh, Sterling Shepard could be the odd man out. Rashad Bateman, very intriguing. I'm not super high on the pass catchers in Baltimore, but if I was to take a stab on one of them, it's going to be Bateman. Uh, what about uh, Denzel Mims, Darius Slayton, Rashad Perryman? I like Gabriel Davis a little bit later. I like Josh Reynolds later. I like A.J. Green and Traquan Smith even later than that. Right There's a lot of great options there, but like I said at the beginning, full Mooney. Now with Andy Dalton, you got uh, Allen Robinson going to command a lot of the attention. Uh, do I love having Mooney and Montgomery? No, I probably wouldn't start them together. But if you're looking to have to start somebody that you draft in round 11, you've already lost your draft. So I'm going for upside here, going full Mooney. Now here we are into the 12th. Logan Thomas is still sitting there, right? That's just somebody who we were debating between him and Noah Fant earlier. Well, I could take him now, and we can have both of them, and just whichever one has the better matchup, whichever one starts off better, we have two great options, right? There's still some guys a little bit later. I love me some Gerald Everett late, some Anthony Fersker late. Those are guys that maybe we look at towards the very end because they're just going undrafted, which is crazy. So for right now, 
since we were debating on the two, let's just take Logan Thomas here, throw him on our bench, and we'll draft or we'll start whichever one has the better matchup on a weekly basis between him and Noah Fant. Go rapid fire here. One thing that I will do differently in a draft like this, and I'll show you here in just a second. So we know the running back position basically basically gone. Uh, wide receiver position, I told you I love me some Gabriel Davis, Traquan Smith, A.J. Green is gone. Somebody else took him. Uh, but Gabriel Davis, big play guy. We have Stephon Diggs already. We would never probably start both of them together, so that's something to pay attention to. I think Rondell Moore sees some action in Arizona. Uh, Emmanuel Sanders, same thing. We already have Stephon Diggs. Anybody above him? Darius Slayton, occasional big play, right? But with Kenny Galladay there and Sterling Shepard and Evan Ingram and Kyle Rudolph and Kelvin Benjamin and Saquon Barkley, I mean, how many touches is he going to get? There's not a whole lot of options until later on. Traquan Smith has the opportunity to be in the number two in New Orleans without Drew Brees. They may spread it around a little bit more. I'm going to take a gamble here because I'm not needing this guy. But Rashad Bateman, as a rookie, by far the best weapon that Lamar Jackson has. And if Lamar Jackson takes any step forward in his passing game, Rashad Bateman is going to be the immediate beneficiary of that. So I'll take a shot here late in drafts. Uh, do I want to go with another quarterback? Who do we got? Trevor Lawrence, the young guy. We could go with the oldest to the youngest on the team. Uh, well, who else we got? We got Baker Mayfield, super solid on a weekly basis. Carson Wentz. I think Carson Wentz has the potential to finish inside the top 10 this year. Daniel Jones does as well. I'm just a little bit more worried about the play calling in New York with Jason Garrett and, and, and knowing that I can trust Daniel Jones. That's a problem. Ryan Fitzmagic. Hey, yeah, I love me some Fitch Magic. Tua. I do think Tua takes a step forward this year, but we're starting to get further down the list of guys that we're just stashing, right? I mean, what is one name at the quarterback position that would really make a big difference on the bench. I don't hate Trevor Lawrence at this point. They have a bad defense, a below average offensive line. They've added pass catching weapons with Marvin Jones uh, coming in. And, and we already know they have DJ Chark and LaVisca Chenault. They're going to, they brought Trevor Lawrence in to throw the ball. Like they didn't bring him in to turn around and hand it off to Travis Etienne. Plus Etienne can catch it out of the backfield or line up in the slot plenty of weapons in a team that's probably still going to lose a lot of football games, be trailing late, and having to throw the football. Trevor Lawrence makes a lot of sense here, and, and honestly, what the hell? At this point, 14th round, I, I got the oldest quarterback in the league. Why not go and get one of the youngest and go Trevor Lawrence? And now this is where I will kind of switch things up a little bit. We still got one spot left on our bench, right? One bench spot, a defense, and a kicker. I will go for a defense now because I know that there's some wide receivers later on that I can just take a stab on, right? And the defense that I'm focusing on and most people should be focusing on and the reason that they're ranked seventh is mind-boggling to me. Give me the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because they are dominant rushing the pass. Uh, they have a, a super solid secondary and you get points for sacks and interceptions, so sign me up for that. I'm going with Tampa Bay here. I will do that one round early when I go heavy wide receiver like this. Will I go with a kicker early? Honestly, maybe. I mean, why not? Why not go take Justin Tucker or Young Ho Koo? I think it's like Young Way, but Young Ho sounds way cooler. Uh, why not go take one of the top kickers? I mean, I'm probably going to be taking somebody who's going to be available in the last round anyway, right? I don't need anything else right this second, so go get the best kicker. Do you want... Uh, Justin Tucker or Young Ho Koo? Which one? <laughs> Young Way. Sorry, I can't, I can't stop. Uh, honestly, if it's me, I'll pick the guy who kicks indoors because he's got to worry about weather less often. I mean, that's about as scientific as I get with kickers. Give me Koo. And now with the last round pick, I'll make my selection here, and then it'll go through, finish the draft, spit out a draft, gate, draft grade. Ignore draft grades on every single website that you use. Uh, you go get the guys that you want. You get the guys that fall to you. The only way that people give you grades is because it depends if you pick the, the people they want you to pick, and if you don't, they drop your grade. They don't see the future either. Uh, so here we go. Last pick. It's going to be a wide receiver. Brashad Perryman is going to get targets. Uh, that's all we're looking for, right, is potential, right, at this point. And Traquan Smith is a number two in New Orleans. They lost Jared Cook. They lost Emmanuel Sanders. Michael Thomas has been hit or miss. Who's the quarterback? If it's Jameis, they're going to throw the ball more. Why not just take a stab? Give me Traquan Smith as my last round pick, the potential number two in New Orleans. And let's see what it spits out here. Do they like the heavy wide receiver? 
79 out of 100. They don't love it. But overall, honestly, I don't hate the team. I don't love it, and I couldn't draft this way with running backs. I personally couldn't. But Brady, Montgomery, Hunt, Diggs, Adams, Fant, Jones, Melvin Gordon, the Bucks, Koo, Connor, Pittman, Mooney, Thomas Bateman, Lawrence, and Smith. Overall, super solid roster. Uh, not how I would want to attack it from the running back position. I would need a little bit more depth, a little bit more safety there. But overall, the team, the team isn't horrible, right? Not like I said at the beginning, though. It really comes down to personal preference. There's a lot of things that factor into winning fantasy football. It's not just, I drafted a great team, I'm going to win. Because a lot can happen throughout the length of an entire fantasy football season. A lot of luck is involved, right? A lot of injury luck and making sure that your studs stay healthy or that their quarterbacks stay healthy. There's a lot that goes in to a lot of things here in fantasy football and Playing the waiver wire throughout the season is by far the most important. We'll have you covered all season long. Do us a favor. It's early here in the offseason. We're having a lot of fun. We're putting out as much content almost daily that we possibly can. Hit that like button for us. We greatly appreciate the support. And if you're looking for all things fantasy football, you have found your home. Welcome to Headliner Nation. Hit that subscribe button down below, and we look forward to talking to you. We've tried to be as interactive as we can here this offseason. So leave a comment down below here in the chat. What do you think? What kind of strategy do you like? Do you like heavy running backs? Do you like heavy pass catchers? We, this is where we figure it all out, right? There's not one way that is the guaranteed way to win. I don't care what your way is. We've played them every single type of way. There's a lot of other factors, but it's always fun to communicate with you guys out there in the comment section. So make sure you leave that comment down below. Hopefully you have a great rest of your day, a great rest of your week, and we'll talk to you later.